Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. If you're into bird photography, you probably have hundreds of images like this. You expertly captured the small songbird on a tree branch, perfectly focused. The composition is very good, but the sky is totally blown out and white. You take it into Lightroom, you do some processing on it like I did, but you know, that sky still kind of ruins the image. Well, you could take it into Photoshop and replace the sky, and I guarantee it will look better, but more often than not, it's not going to look natural. Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to spruce up this image by taking it into Photoshop, replacing the sky, and then making that sky look like it belongs in the scene. It's still very easy to do, and once you learn how to do it, you'll probably go through all those hundreds of small songbird images you have with blown out skies and start doing it. Now, we're gonna do it now. I have this image. I did do some processing in Lightroom. It is uncropped. It is a Nikon RAW file shot with Nikon D800E. You can see the settings over here. Now, I want to do something with that sky, so I'm gonna send it, I'm going to send it into Photoshop by right-clicking on it, going down to Edit In, and then over to Edit in Adobe Photoshop. Now, because this is a RAW file, it's not giving me the option to send a copy or send a copy with Lightroom Adjustments. It's just going to open the RAW file directly into Photoshop. And I just want to replace the sky, so I'm going to do that right away. I'm going to go up to Edit, and then down to Sky Replacement. And what it will do is it will replace the sky with the last sky I used, which happens to be an OccuDrone sky. Those of you that watch my videos know that I've been plugging and pushing OccuDrone, OccuDrone skies for some time. I truly believe they're the best skies on the market. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to their website and I have a discount code. If you choose to purchase them, you'll save yourself a few dollars. Now, I kind of like, even though this was the last sky I used, I kind of like it. It looks pretty good, but there's something critically wrong. If you look at the bird, right, the bird's in perfect focus. The branches just beyond the bird and the branches just in front of the bird are out of focus. So I had very shallow depth of field. It doesn't look right with that sky being perfectly focused. So I need to blur the sky. Unfortunately, there is not an option in Photoshop to blur the sky. Now, if you're doing this, in Luminar AI or Luminar Neo or on One Photo Raw 2022, you could replace the sky and blur it all in the same dialog box. Unfortunately, we can't do that with Photoshop. We can shift the edge so we can move it up or down. We could um, fade the edge if the edges like that bottom doesn't look right. You could fade it in or out. You could adjust the brightness, the color temperature, and the scale of the sky, make it zoomed in or zoomed out. You could do stuff with the foreground elements, but still none of this is blurring that sky. So what we need to do is first decide on the sky we want to use. I like this one, let's use it. And then this is critical, output two. You have two options, output to a duplicate layer, which I think by default it will be set at. You want to change that to output to new layers. Make sure you're outputting this to new layers. And I'm gonna do that. And when you do that, you'll have a number of layers now. And the top layer is the actual sky layer. You can see. So what you want to do now is once you output it to new layers, click on that top layer, the layer that is the sky. And then we're going to blur this layer. Now to do that, go up to filter, blur, and there's a number of different blurs you could use. And you may be tempted to use lens blur, but I recommend against it. Let me show you. We'll do lens blur, and you can see that it opens up this lens blur, di blur dialog box. And it's a very slow filter. It takes a long time to render. And it renders the sky all by itself. And there's a lot of adjustments, a lot of different things you could do to blur the sky. But we can't see the sky while looking at those branches that are blurred to make sure that it looks uniform, that it looks natural. So because of that, I strongly recommend that you do not use lens blur. So I'm gonna cancel out of that. And instead, I recommend that you go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, probably the most common blur used in Photoshop. When you use Gaussian blur, you just get this little Gaussian blur dialog box. It renders very quickly 
and you'll be able to see the blurred sky along with the rest of the image. And then what you want to do is you want to move this radius slider around to blur the sky. Now, if you're not seeing it rendered as you're moving the slider, make sure this preview checkbox is checked so that you're seeing it rendered. And what you want to do is you want to blur it so it matches the scene. And I think probably, and don't worry, you know, it's, you may be tempted like to make it look like this where the sky is more discernible but it really won't look natural because look at these branches back here are blurred these branches over here are blurred it just won't look right having that like in better focus so i'm going to move it pretty high to make it look more right you know look like it should i think somewhere around 62 looks pretty good so right there i'm happy with that we're just going to click ok now we're done. We're done in Photoshop. Now you could go up to File, Save, and save it. What I do, which is dangerous probably, but what I do is I just quit Photoshop and then it comes up with this warning me, do you want to save it? And of course I want to save it. So I'll click Save. Now once it saves it, it will open this up back in Lightroom and then I'll finish my processing in Lightroom. One thing you may have noticed it did when it replaced this guy, it kind of darkened the image a little bit. So I think it's a little bit too dark. And you may find also that it takes a long time to save because when you have a lot of layers, it takes longer to save. The file will be larger as well. So be aware of that. So it is taking quite a while. You can see in the lower left-hand corner there is a progress bar and it's kind of stuck at 97%. And you'll find that it will just kind of stick there. And there we go. Now we opened up into Lightroom. So there's our original image. And now there is our image with the sky replaced. Now I need to process this a little more to make it look more realistic. I'm just going to go to the basic tab and I'm going to go to exposure and I'm just going to click up exposure quite a bit. And then I'm going to go to masking and I'm going to select the subject. I want to select the bird, but you can see how it selected the branches kind of surrounding the bird a little bit. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to subtract from the selection with a brush. I'm going to make sure that auto mask is not checked and then I'm going to get a brush just by sliding my finger on my Apple Magic Mouse. I could change the brush size. Make sure flow and density at our 100. You can use the left bracket key and the right bracket key to change the size of the brush. And then we're just going to come in and I'm going to erase it from where I don't want it, which I don't want it on these branches. Like here. No, I probably have to get a smaller brush so I don't hit the bird. So I'll hit the left bracket key for this instance and then come in here and just come in and just try to take it away from that branch as much as possible. It's not hypercritical that I remove it perfectly from the branch, just kind of from the branch. Because all I'm doing now with it is I want to bring the exposure of the bird a little more. So make the bird a little bit brighter and I'll probably maybe add some clarity to the birds so that makes it a little darker. If I wanted to add a little saturation, it's pretty colorful though. This is a palm, palm warbler, by the way, this bird. Turn saturation up just a bit and maybe add a bit of sharpness. And I'm done with masking, right? So we'll close that down. I'm done with the basic tab. I think maybe we'll just add, um, add a vignette, just a darker vignette to pull everyone's attention more towards the middle. And that is my finished image. Now, to remind you, this was the original image. It was okay, but I think you'll agree that one is much better, albeit it's, quote, fake, because I'm sure someone's going to comment in the description, because they always do. Nice fake image. Yeah, it's fake, but I like it, and that's all that matters. So hopefully you'll like doing this process to your images as well. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>